So the new Raspberry Pi has arrived. And he ordered the zero W and it is tiny. Let's just show you how small it is. Talking, put it next to my watch. Okay, so we're going to download Raspberry Sketch Lite. We don't need the full version with desktops, so we're not going to use that. So, raspberrypi.org for that download. And we're also going to use uh, Etcher. I'll leave a link in the comment section. And we're just going to flash the image now. So basically select the image that we downloaded and zipped. Uh, it's on a GoPro quick key. They are worthless, horrible things. And flash the drive. Uh, once you're flashed, you should be ready to prepare the disk for bootless uh, entry so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of files in here i'm going to edit these in atom but any text editor will do decent text editor so the first thing we're going to do is i'm going to add a new file and we're just going to save it as ssh this will give us um the the config will pick up this file and it will um give us ssh access to the uh, Raspberry Pi so we get we can do whatever we need to do the next file we're going to do because it's got built-in Wi-Fi um, we're going to create the Wi-Fi file with all the configuration in it so go ahead and create another file and this one we are going to call or save as um, wpsupplicant.conf and then we're just going to paste in some data in there obviously change country to whatever your country will be and the SSID and the password in the end I took out key management because I don't think you really need any of that it took me a, one or two attempts to get it to work save that right so we've SSH'd into the drive now and we're all up and running first thing we're going to want to do is expand the file system um, just so it uses the full I think this card was a 16 gig so we just want to expand the file system out to use the whole of the file system and it will go ahead and do that and tell you that it's enlarged or it will enlarge it on the next boot the next thing we're going to do is change the password from the default password so we'll just enter a new password, something that you will remember. And that will save it, prompting us each time we go in about changing the password or SSH in. And then we'll just finish and it will reboot. And it will ask us to reboot and away we go. So we're just going to SSH back in again. Now I found my Pi because uh, I saw it in my DHCP on my um, my wireless access points. So you can pick it up from other places. There are scanners available for it. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to clone down the uh, web admin tools or a script to run web admin. You don't necessarily need to do this, but I find it's easier to maintain the server if you've got web admin on there so git not found because this is a cut down version so we'll just quickly install that so sudo apt install git <coughs> and it will install and we can now clone our scripts directory again link in the comments 
So we'll just change over to the scripts directory that we've just downloaded into. And we will run the file. And that's web admin installed somewhat faster than it is. It takes about 20 minutes. And we can log in and do whatever we want. So next up <coughs> we're going to install into the directory uh, a directory var.wolf. You can put it anywhere you want it's just I chose this one because it's nice and easy. So we're just going to do a make directory. You don't really need to do this um, I went back and went into the var directory and just cloned out and again I'll put a link in the comments cloned uh, the wolf uh, from github and you can see in there there's some rb files the only one we're really interested in is the uh, um, wolf.c because we're going to edit that in a minute so that was an IP config just to check out the name of the interfaces. We've only got one interface on here and mine's called uh, WLAN zero. If you have more than one interface, you could play about with those. Use one for in and one for out. So the only thing we really need to change in here is we scroll down a bit and <coughs> change these two here. So ETH name and PPP name just change these to WLAN O for me but again you could change these if you've got more than one network card in there or more than one um, uh, device but because we're doing it on the Raspberry Pi it only has wireless on it so it's nice and straightforward you could uh, always change default ports if you wanted to um, so we're just going to save that and next thing we want to do is compile it. So gcc wolf.c and then over output file and then we're just going to call it wolf. And we don't have permission so we'll just sudo that up. And there it is. And that's it built ready to go so we'll just test it and you can see starting wolf and we'll send a packet to it just to make sure that it's getting it you can set the subject mass i'm going to leave it on 255 so it'll go direct because that's it my internal network you may need to change it if you want to but you can see there we got 102 packets bytes received whatever so the next thing uh, is running it as a service and this is a script to run it as a service so what we're going to want to do is to go into webmin and file manager you can do this um, from the command line but it's just a bit easier here so etc etc rather and then we're going to go into init.d and we're just going to create a file in here. I'm going to imaginatively title this one Wolf. Um, wake on land forwarder. And create that file. And then just open it up for editing. And because I'm lazy, I'm just going to basically copy this from directly from GitHub. So there's an option to, at the top, we've just gone past it. Uh, go back up there's a button there to change it to raw so it'll just have the code so you can just right click and edit uh, I have made a few changes to this because there was a gap at the top which um, caused a problem and um, you can see there that where line one should be where line two is other than that you can change location here if you want to wherever the file is and uh, I've got it as root user but you could quite easily can create your own user uh, and play about with it 
but I'll save that and then back into the terminal just a few more commands to go we'll just close that and we just need to make the file um, the script that we've just done executable so we'll copy that cmod out and paste it into our SSH and we're done with that one again you, you need to do this once and once only and then update rc.d will make sure it runs at, at boot and enter and then we can finally set it to start and if you want to check system ctl status wolf.service to check whether it started it all looks good so the next thing we're going to do is just test it out to make sure that uh, everything's working as it should be so i'm just going to quickly install t shark it's a, a network protocol analyzer so it will capture packets coming in and out and the command is uh, tshark um, dash i interface for wlan and dash w basically where the file is going so we're running as root could be dangerous but not too much of a problem and back on uh, the Depicus website we will send a packet to it and then just control c as we mow things just to stop it and we'll just pop over to webmin and we will download the file uh, var wolf and wolf.shark once you've downloaded it i've got wireshark on the my local laptop so i just go to file open and then um, I saved it to the desktop and there it is and you can see lots of stuff in there and Wireshock nicely filters it for you so you have the option to filter on wake on LAN and there we are there's our two packets one that came in um, on 10 which is my server to 30 which is the um, which is the uh, Raspberry Pi, and then 30 sent out to 255.255.255, which is basically just a broadcast. And you can see it used port 4343 and then 4344. Again, you can change these ports in the program if you want to. But that's it. It's, um, it's now ready and available, and you can see the MAC address repeated 16 times. It means that the Wake On Lap packet was sent out. So, um, had it had a uh, a proper real MAC address in there, um, it would have been done. Okay, thanks for watching.